My goal with these videos is to supplement the topic material where needed and provide a Dr. Tom approach to the solution of selected examples in support of participants in our Mechanical Engineering PE Review courses. If you have not already done so, I invite you to go to our website where you will find other free videos and information about our review courses. There are several course formats to fit your exam preparation needs. And you can contact us at info at drtomsclassroom.com. Okay, let's get started. This instructional companion is titled uh, Simplest Res Resultants, and it will be based on example uh, 45.1, uh, an example that we have uh, already uh, done three uh, previous uh, instructional companions, uh, distributed loads, determinate beams, and 2D beams. Uh, it is a distributed load uh, that com covers most of the, the, the ones that you might see. Uh, the triangular load and a trapezoidal load. The trapezoidal load, instead of using the trapezoidal rule, uh, uh, which to me is uh, way way overkill, you can use a rectangle plus another triangle. And in uh, distributed loads, uh, I calculated or showed how you calculate all three of those. Uh, this one I think was F1, and then the constant was F2, and then the triangle was F3, uh, and uh, and showed where they were uh, all three located. Uh, then in determinate beams, because the beam that we're looking at here is uh, statically indeterminate, it's got four reactions, two here, one here, and one there, four, you know, one too many, um, and so you sort of have to get rid of one. Well, I wanted to kind of talk about uh, determinate beams and reactions, so uh, that was covered in uh, uh, this instructional companion, determinate beams. Uh, and then uh, finally, to get around to solving a problem, uh, which was not done in the uh, uh, MERM, is okay 2D beams uh, is that we take the same beam and uh, let's just get rid of B here that's sort of in the middle so we have a simply supported beam pin on the left at A roller over at C and proceed to show how you would use equilibrium the three equilibrium equations uh, in order to find the reactions at A and at C uh, however, in the interim, uh, there's been uh, quite a few questions uh, about how uh, you would replace uh, this uh, distributed load with a single, a single load at a single point, which is referred to in textbooks as simplest resultants. Uh, it really isn't necessary. You can leave them the way we did and, and go in and solve them like we did in 2D beams. But uh, somehow uh, in cl classes and courses, uh, there's some um, importance given to uh, being able to, uh, to do that. To to come up with a single force at a single location. So here we're going to do that. Okay, so uh, let's see what we've got here. Okay, from the uh, distributed load video, uh, this is sort of a summary of what we found. We found uh, uh, 1,200 pounds uh, was the triangular part, and it was located, again, two-thirds from uh, the distance from A to B, 16 feet. Uh, then uh, F2 was the rectangular load here between B and C, and that's 1,800 pounds, and it was located uh, halfway in between, but you got to add A, so that's at 42 feet. And then uh, for the triangular load that's left over from 100 down to 50, uh, 900 pounds, and it's located at uh, one-third from uh, B to C, which came out to be uh, 36 feet from A. We needed all of our dimensions uh, from, uh, from A, because that's where we were going to uh, take moments when we uh, were going to apply equilibrium here. Okay, so, uh, well, what is this thing about simplest uh, resultants uh, about anyway? What it's about is uh, coming up again with a single uh, single load or single force, which is called the resultant. That's why it's simply simply uh, simplest resultants uh, F sub capital R located at some distance x sub R uh, is what. And uh, how do we define those? Okay, uh, the F sub R is nothing more than F sub total, which uh, we found uh, in, again in the uh, distributed. Um, uh, loads uh, video, F1 plus F2 plus F3, I think that adds up to 3,900, and we're going to do this on another page here. And then uh, the F sub R times X sub R, that resultant must be the sum of all the individual forces and their locations uh, from uh, from a common point. In this particular case, we're going to pick A. We could pick uh, any point here. Uh, they might be asked, well, how far is it from B or C? But, of course, once we find it from A, then we can find it from any of the other locations, uh, from B or even back, uh, back from C here. Uh, so uh, let's go back to the previous slide. 
Okay, here are uh, our uh, various forces. I think this was F1, uh, this one was F2, this was F3. So therefore, uh, this one is uh, X1, the 16 feet, uh, 42 feet is going to be our X2, and our 36 feet is going to be our X3. Okay, so each one of those, let me put those in parentheses, so easy to identify. Okay, so what we're going to do is just substitute those numbers into the equations that we have. Okay, well then if we take uh, F sub R is the sum of the three forces, uh, 1200 plus the 1800, that's 3000, plus another 900 gives us uh, uh, 3900 is our total. And then if we uh, do uh, F sub R times uh, X sub R, uh, the 1200 times its distance, uh, F1, X1. Uh, for 2, F, uh, F2 times its 42 feet, and the lastly, the 900 times its distance, 36, uh, add all those up and get 127,200 foot-pounds. Okay, so now we need to do is just uh, solve, actually, uh, we can just solve this equation right here for X sub R, so let's do that. Okay, well, if we take the... Uh, 127,200 foot-pounds divided by 3,900 pounds, uh, we don't get a really nice number. Usually uh, in classes and problems you get some nice numbers, but that didn't happen. Uh, so obviously that didn't, uh, the numbers weren't chosen up front. And the 32.6 to one decimal place, 33 might have been, might have been okay, just means that it's just past uh, B because it's uh, 24 feet between A and B. Okay, well let's see what this looks like uh, as a final answer. Okay, showing that now on our beam, uh, we've got the 3,900 pounds and uh, the 32.6 feet. And now what we have is what we refer to as the simplest resultant of a multiple force uh, for system. Again, um, in order to find the equilibrium, you didn't really need to do that. But it's, uh, I guess it's nice to, to be able to, to do this sort of calculation here. Now, remember, again, uh, that I'm showing these uh, forces as squiggle uh, to uh, emphasize uh, that uh, these forces are uh, simpler resultants of distributed loads. Uh, they are not concentrated. And so uh, uh, this is uh, sort of the start of another problem. Uh, all you can do is use this to find equilibrium. You can't use it to, to do the shear force and bending moment diagram find the stress, deflection, uh, a, a concentrated load of 3,900 pounds is very different than, than this distributed load uh, on this particular beam. Okay? Again, I invite you to visit our website as part of your exam preparations. And if you have a question about our courses, please contact us at info at drtomsclassroom.com. Thank you for your time, and it's been a pleasure.